All right. Welcome back, everyone. You know how much we love to dig deep into what's got you talking. Absolutely. And today, well, today we're diving into something that's really stirring the pot, so to speak. Mm -hmm. President Biden's pardon of his son, Hunter Biden. Yeah, a lot of buzz around this one. A lot of buzz indeed. Yeah. We've got a whole stack of your articles and opinions right here. And let me tell you, folks are fired up. I can imagine. It's a decision that really gets to the heart of some fundamental American values, you know? Fairness, accountability. Right. What it means to live in a country where everyone's treated equally under the law. Big questions. No doubt about it. I mean, remember all those times Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre told us flat out, no pardons happening? I do. Yep. And then wham, pardon granted. Yeah. I think a lot of people are feeling like, hold on a minute, what just happened? It's definitely a head scratcher for many. Right. You know, and that sudden shift, it makes you wonder about transparency about whether promises are being kept. And for folks who believe in honest leadership, a government that's accountable to its citizens, that's a big deal. It erodes trust. Huge deal. And I think for a lot of our listeners, this goes way beyond just Hunter Biden. It's about the principles that this country was built on. Right? Yeah, absolutely. That idea that in America, no one's above the law, no matter who your family is, Everyone plays by the same rules. That's the ideal, isn't it? And that's where looking back at the history of presidential pardons gets really interesting. It does. Fill us in. What do we see when we look back? Well, we see examples that most folks would agree were acts of mercy, like take President Ford pardoning Nixon after Watergate, right? <laughs> A nation healing, trying to move forward. Or trying to put it all behind them. Exactly. But then you have cases that raise a lot of eyebrows, like President Clinton's pardon of Mark Rich, this financier who'd skipped the country to avoid tax evasion charges. And in those instances, people start asking, wait, is this power being used the right way? Or is it more about personal gain, political favors? Yeah, those are the ones that get people talking. For sure. And it sparks a debate about the purpose of pardons, the limits of presidential power. It really makes you think. So let's bring it back to Karine Jean-Pierre for a second. She was pretty adamant that a pardon wasn't even on the table. How does this affect her now? Tough situation for her, no question. Her credibility's definitely taken a hit. It makes you wonder, was she intentionally misleading the public? Or was she kept out of the loop? Right, like was she in on it? Either way, it damages that trust between the administration and the people. And without trust, how do we have honest conversations about the things that matter? That's such a good point. It's like that foundation is cracked and it makes everything else shaky. <laughs> It all comes back to that public trust, doesn't it? It really does. A healthy democracy needs transparency, open dialogue. This whole situation, regardless of where you stand politically, it underlines how crucial it is for leaders to be accountable for their actions and their words. Absolutely. And for us as citizens to stay informed, ask tough questions, and hold those elected officials to the highest standards. Couldn't agree more. Always be questioning, always be digging deeper. And on that note, here's something to chew on as you continue to explore this issue. What does this whole thing say about the balance of power in our government? Is a presidential pardon power as it stands right now something that needs a closer look? Hmm, good question. Something to ponder, folks. It's Until next time, stay curious. See you next time.